Let us perform some tasks to understand more about Python data types and operators. Create variables or objects of int and float. Create two variables i1 and i2 with values 10 and 20 respectively. You can see here, we have created two variables i1 and i2 with values 10 and 20. As 10 and 20 are integers, i1 and i2 will also be of type integers. Now we have to add these two variables and assign the result to res underscore i. This will take care of that. Now we have to check the type of res underscore i. Before that, I'm just printing. You can see the value as 30 and the type is int. So if you add two ints, you will get a new int as result. That's what is proved with the task. Now create two variables f1 and f2 with values 10 and half and 15.6 respectively. Add the variables and assign the result to res underscore f. Check the type of f1, f2 and res underscore f. So I have created two variables f1 and f2 and then added f1 and f2 and assigned to res underscore f. Let me print the result. You can see the output as expected. 10 and half plus 15.6 is nothing but 26.1 or 26.1. Now you can say type of f1, it is of type float. Type of res underscore f is also of type float. Now create two variables v1 and v2 with values 4 and 10.0 respectively. Add the variables and assign the result to res underscore v. Check the type of v1, v2 and res underscore v. So when it comes to the previous two examples, when we add two ints, it resulted in new int. When we add two floats, it resulted in a new float. Now we are trying to understand what will be the result when we add integer and a float. So in this case, v1 is of type integer because we are assigning 4 to it. v2 will be of type float because we are assigning 10.0 to v2. Now let's see what will be the result in res underscore v. We got 14.0 uh, and the type is float. So when we add integer and a float, the result will be float. When we compare the data types of integer and float, float is a bit more generic type. Typically when we play with two different types of objects, it will typecast to the most generic type of the two. So in this case, as float is generic type compared to int, it is typecast to float automatically for us. So when we add a float with an integer, we'll get a float. So this is the question I got from one of my previous classes. So in this case, I have f1 as 10.1 f2 as 20.2 in single quotes which means f2 is of type string now let's see what happens when we try to add these two you got the float however if you don't have this it will throw an error we cannot just uh, use plus of contrasting data types in this case string and float cannot be added or concatenated using plus that is the limitation in python it will just throw error however if you typecast this to float it will be added and you will be seeing the output as 30.3 approximately if you typecast this to string then both will be concatenated it will be 10.1 20.2 as one string so that's what will happen with this example now create object or variable s of type string for value hello world and print on the screen this is pretty straightforward you should be able to see the output here. So in this case, we are trying to enclose world in single quotes. If you want to enclose a particular string in the main string in single quotes, then you can put the main string in double quotes like this. However, if you want to have world in double quotes, then you can enclose this in single quote. So in Python, you can use either single quotes or double quotes to represent the strings. Now let us create two string objects S1 and S2 with values hello and world respectively and concatenate with space between them. This is how it will look like. This is one of the way where we can concatenate two strings. There are other approaches also, but this is one of the ways. Now you can see the output as hello space world. This approach of concatenating a string and number directly using plus fails as it required typecasting. We have seen that example in the past. I am demonstrating once again here. It failed. However, if I say s1 plus space and then plus str of i it will work also there is an alternative approach for concatenating the strings without typecasting this is modern more readable and preferred work conventional approach you just create a variable like this with placeholders s3 and s4 in curly braces like this and then you can actually define s3 with the string s4 with the integer then as part of the print you can use s which is of type string and then you can say format for each of these placeholders you can actually pass the values so in this case this s3 is nothing but this s3 this s3 is nothing but this s3 so we're passing hello to the s3 and one for s4 
and you should be able to see the results without typecasting. Hello and one are concatenated without any issue. You can also pass these things by positional notation. This is by name. This is by position. So here we have two curly braces and I am using dot format S3 comma S4. S3 will be replacing this one. S4 will be replacing this one. You can run this and you should be able to see the result. This is the most recent approach and neat approach and I would highly recommend you to get used to this rather than concatenating strings like this. This is outdated approach. You should fall into this category. You should always use this type of approach to concatenate the strings in Python because it actually improves the readability of the code. Now let's compare whether i1 and i2 are equal and assign it to a variable res underscore e then check the type of it. In this case when I say it, it is nothing but type of res underscore e. So i1 equal to 10 and i2 equal to 20. To see if they are equal, we can actually say i1 double equal to i2 like this. You can see it is written false because they are not equal. However, you can actually say i1 less than i2. In this case, uh, it will return true. And if you want to print the res underscore 3, not s3, but res underscore 3, it is nothing but true. And type of res underscore 3 is nothing but bool or boolean. So this is how you should be able to perform different operations and understand what is going on internally. Whenever you perform any comparison operation, it returns either true or false. If you want to use boolean operations, you can leverage those things also. We will talk about boolean operations with a bit realistic examples at a later point in time. For now, park the boolean operations aside and focus on some of the basic arithmetic operations and comparison operations with whatever examples I have shown here. Just get used to it and as we get into the course, you will understand all these aspects with realistic examples.